I invite the congregation to stand. We join in our opening sentences today. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We continue with our opening sentences today. Christ is risen. Let us ever walk with Jesus to behold the gift of his forgiveness. To marvel at the magnitude of his mercy. And we need not be afraid. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We invite you to turn and face the processional cross as we sing together our opening hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we begin our service as Easter, I invite the congregation to kneel as we take these moments confessing our sins and seeking our Lord's forgiveness.
Forgive me, O Lord, when my besetting sins entangle me and completely surround me. Who will rescue? Forgive me, Lord, when I am so eager to get, but so reluctant to give, so ready to receive your gifts, but so unwilling to bear the cross. Who will rescue me? Forgive me, merciful Father, when I avoid making any commitment to you, when I doubt that you really see my sin, when I disobey your commandments and am satisfied with only living for myself. Who will rescue me from this body? Forgive me, O oh God, when I am quick to find fault, but resentful when someone points out my faults when I am so soon at play, but so late in prayer. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Father, forgive me when I rejoice in the temporary, but think little of the eternal, when I am so fond of being idle, but show little passion for helpful service. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear God's words of mercy and grace spoken to you on this Easter morning. Jesus walked to places of rejection, suffering, torment, and death for you. Jesus was determined to go to Gethsemane and Gabbatha and Golgotha for you. That's why Jesus forgives you completely and loves you eternally. And so as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Faithful Lord, with me abide. I shall follow where you guide. Together we stand and together we stand.
Almighty God and Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we hear God's word for us on this day of our Lord's resurrection. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading is from the book of Job, chapter 19, verses 23 through 27. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 15 through 18. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God.
At this time, I invite the congregation to stand as we hear together the words of our Lord from the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated, and any children with us today in worship, you're invited to come forward to the front at this time for a message. Good morning, everyone. There's still some good seats on the front seat there. Good morning, guys. So good to be together at church, isn't it? And especially on Easter, where we celebrate that Jesus has risen from the dead. He's won the victory for us. You know, I was thinking this week about about a story that I heard once, and it's a made-up story. But I thought I'd tell it to you today because it helps us maybe understand something that we should understand on Easter. In this made-up story, it's a story about a mouse. And the mouse is afraid. You know what the mouse is afraid of? He's just met a cat. And he's really afraid of the cat. But one day, the mouse meets a magician. And the magician says, I will turn you into a cat so you won't be afraid. And guess what? He does it. So then the mouse turned into the cat no longer is afraid. But that doesn't last because a couple days later, the cat meets, guess what? A dog. And guess what? The cat is afraid again. But the magician says, don't worry, I'll help you out again. I'll just turn you into, what do you think? A dog, right? I'll turn you into a dog and it will be fine. And that's what he does. And all of a sudden, the mouse turned into a cat, turned into a dog, isn't afraid anymore. Well, a few days pass, and the dog meets a lion. And guess what? The dog is afraid. The dog is terrified. But the magician says, don't worry. I'll turn you into a lion, and everything will be okay." And so he does. And now the mouse turned into a cat, turned into a dog, turned into a lion, isn't afraid anymore. But a few days go by and the lion meets a hunter. And guess what? The lion is really afraid. And he goes to his friend, the magician, and says, please turn me into a hunter. And the magician says, no, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to do this. I'm going to turn you back into a mouse. Because though you look like a lion on the outside, inside you still have the heart of a mouse. You know, sometimes I think that's the way it is for us, right? Sometimes we can look 
big and bold and brave on the outside like a lion, like nothing would ever scare us. But inside, do we always feel that way? I don't think so. I think sometimes there's a lot of things that make us afraid. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of snakes? Anyone afraid of snakes? Uh, not really. What about, about thunderstorms? Thunderstorms? Yeah. What about, what about the dark? Is the dark scary? What about this one? Lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my! Are any of those scary? These guys are pretty brave. <laughs> you know what? I, I gotta say though, for me, there's things that make me afraid. I know there's things that make you afraid. Guess what? Everyone we see out there, they may look like lions and never afraid, but inside, inside, they probably have the heart of mice, right? Are there things that make them afraid too? Yeah, there definitely is. You know, in our gospel reading today, a real story from the first Easter, women were going to the tomb to find Jesus' body, and when they got there, they were afraid, weren't they? They were afraid because a stone had been rolled away. They were afraid because they couldn't find Jesus' body. They were afraid because an angel was there instead. And yet, do you remember what the angel said to them? He said, do not be what? Afraid. You're right. Do not be afraid because Jesus has risen. And then a few minutes later, the women went to go and tell others what they had seen, and they ran into Jesus. And you know what Jesus said to them? He said, do not be afraid. If Jesus has defeated even death, even something that probably is scary at, in a little bit for all of us, then can we also trust that Jesus is more powerful than all the things in life that may scare us, like being sick or being sad or, or snakes or storms or the dark or you name it. Is Jesus more powerful than that? Because he's risen from the dead, we know that he is, which means we can trust in him and have faith in him, even when we go through things that are scary. You know, there's something we want to give for you today. Uh, this is from Miss Carla and our PAC team here at church. It's a, a nail on a ribbon. Now, the nail reminds us of the nails that were used when Jesus died on the cross for us because he loves us. But on the back of these nails, there's a Bible verse. Not the whole verse, but it's where we can find it in the Bible. It says Galatians 2.20. You know, that's one of my favorite verses. It says, um, the life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. For I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but the life I live in the body, I live by, is it fear? No, it's I live by faith in the Son of God, in Jesus who loves me and who gave himself for me. So we have one of these that we can give to each of you, and I hope it reminds you, one, God loves me, but two, because Jesus has risen from the dead, he gives me faith to trust in him, even, even when I go through things that are scary, even when I have scary days. Isn't that a wonderful promise? Absolutely. Let's pray and thank God for what he's done for us. I'll pray for us today. Thank you for folding your hands. We'll pray. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful day of Easter that we can celebrate that Jesus has risen from the dead. And that means there's no need to fear the things that make us afraid. But rather, we're called to trust in you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us faith. Thank you for giving us faith to trust in you and your promises to us in Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so in just a moment, I'm going to hand out these to you while our congregation sings. One last thing for you to know, there's some wonderful Easter books and some other Easter goodies that are available in the parish hall on a table. If you are interested in one of those to take it home, please do so after our service today. Remind your families to pick one up as you go. We're glad you can have it with you.
So as I hand these out, the congregation will join in singing this wonderful, joyous, jubilant Easter truth that we know that our Redeemer lives. God bless our meditation on his word for us this morning as we celebrate anew that our Savior has conquered the grave, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We heard each of these four verses together just a few moments ago in our gospel reading on this Easter morning. These were some of the words that we heard. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angels said to the women, Do not be afraid. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. You know, Easter is supposed to be a time of Great joy, hallelujahs and flowers and music and celebration. But from these verses, however, we see that Easter begins with fear. Great fear, great fourfold fear. Here's a working definition of fear for us on this Easter morning false evidence appearing real. That's it. False evidence appearing real. What is the false evidence appearing real on the first Easter? Well, Jesus had been beaten barbarically. He'd been maimed mercilessly. He'd been buried haphazardly. So his ministry, it was over. His movement, it was finished. His cause, done. All hope, lost. Easter begins with great Fear, great fourfold fear, false evidence appearing so very real. 
course, the goal of our Easter message, though, isn't to dwell in our fear, is it? Rather, the goal of this message is to move us by God's grace from fear towards faith. And what about faith? What is faith? Well, how about this? Forsaking all, I take him. Who is him? Well, Jesus, of course. Jesus, our Redeemer. For Jesus, our Redeemer, creates beauty from ashes. Remember that. If I give you an Easter pop quiz later in the sermon, remember that. Jesus creates beauty from ashes. Before we can get to faith, though, we begin with fear Because that's how the first Easter begins. And as much as we try to deny it and fake it and stuff it away, the truth is, not only our children, but each one of us, we all live in fear at times. False evidence appearing real. Because fear is the grizzly bear behind every corner. And we just know that it's only a matter of time until it leaps out of the shadows. It bears its ugly fangs and it chews us up along with our family, our friends, and all of our finances too. Fear whispers incessantly into our ear. There's trouble out there. So we don't sleep well. We don't whistle while we work. And when others whistle while they work, we give them the look, don't we? You know the look. You've seen it and you've given it out too. That are you that naive look? We scold them. Haven't you read the news? Haven't you heard the reports? Haven't you seen the studies? Airplanes fall out of the sky. Bull markets turn bare, terrorists terrorize, good people turn bad, the other shoe will drop, fine print will be found. What are you doing? Whistling while you work. And where do all those thoughts in our minds come from? They all come from fear. Fear attacks us with two words. What if... What if I don't close the sale? What if I don't get the bonus? What if she doesn't love me? What if my kids have crooked teeth? What if their crooked teeth keep them from having friends, a career, a spouse? What if they end up homeless, sitting on a street corner, holding a cardboard sign that says, My parents never fix my crooked teeth. Fear twists us into emotional pretzels. It makes our eyes twitch, our blood pressure rise, our heads ache, and our armpits sweat. And then what do we do? Maybe we numb our fear with six-packs or food binges or too much TV. Maybe we express our fear with volcanic anger or silent stares because we are certified experts at both. Isn't that what fear does to us? It makes us into people who are not very fun to be with. And when we recognize that in ourselves, we often become even more fearful, don't we? For the person we don't want to be with is the one person we can't escape. The one that looks back at us in the mirror first thing in the morning and the last thing at night. So is there a fix for fear? I don't know about you, but I sure hope so. The Eisenhelm altarpiece is located in France. This 16th century altarpiece was created for a monastery that cared for people with skin diseases. And that's an important point, because in this work of art, Christ has been given a skin disease. Why? 
in order to show patience that Jesus understands and sympathizes with their fear. For the people of the monastery were afraid that their skin disease would kill them. So what is it for you? What do you think will kill you? Teenagers, taxes, cancer, loneliness, heartache, depression, debt, divorce, dementia. Whatever it is, this altarpiece reminds us that Jesus, he understands. Mary, the mother of Jesus, knows all about fear, too. In this altarpiece, Mary is collapsing in anguish into the arms of John, Christ's beloved disciple. A mother's greatest fear has come true. She's witnessed the death of her son, her dear son, Jesus. John the Baptist also appears on this altarpiece. He is the one with the lamb there by him on the right, symbolizing the sacrifice of Jesus. Now, in real life, John was beheaded by the order of Herod Antipas in 29 AD, so he couldn't have witnessed, with, witnessed Christ's death. But the artists include John to remind us of what he told us about Jesus. And even his finger in the painting held out towards the cross, even that reminds us of his words, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's another important point to be found in this work, too. For what looks like world ending is really life giving. Yes, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Your sin, my sin, our ugly, rotten, putrid sin. That's because Jesus is a Redeemer. And does anyone remember what a Redeemer does? It's pop quiz time. Are you ready? I told you it was coming, and here it is. A Redeemer creates beauty from ashes. The Eisenheim altarpiece has two painted wings that open and close over the central painting like doors on a cabinet. And when the wings are closed, the altarpiece shows the crucifixion like it does here. Christ hanging on the cross, his body discolored by a greenish hue, his wounds covering a sick body, suffering, rejection, death, death on a cross. But on Easter, the outer wings of this altarpiece are opened up. And when it's opened, there on the right side, you'd, you'd see this. Christ bursting forth from the tomb. Christ is risen. Death has no more dominion over him. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. In the painting, Christ's hands are raised in blessing. Behind him, in orange and starting ye startling yellow, a sun rises against the sky. Swirls of yellow and white and red and blue garments adorn our Savior. But perhaps the most amazing feature of the, this painting of the resurrection might just be the rubies. See, the artists placed rubies in Christ's hands and in his feet and his side. Rubies from out of scars. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus, our Redeemer, creates beauty from ashes. Rubies from scars. The disciples' rejection and desertion, they're now rubies. The flogging and the mocking, now they're rubies. The nails and the spear, rubies. Why? Because death 
is dead. Sin is forgiven. Hope is eternal. The victory is won. And what looks world-ending is actually life-giving. Who would have ever seen this coming? Only one person, right? Only Jesus. For Jesus said this would happen. Five times in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus said he would rise from the dead. Five times Jesus said, I must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things, be killed, and on the third day be raised. Five times Jesus said that. But still, still the disciples were cowered in fear. And with such little faith, they abandoned Jesus on Thursday. Only one of them stood at the cross on Friday. And on Sunday, they all are hiding behind locked doors for fear of the Jews. It's so easy, isn't it? It's so easy to get consumed with fear, false evidence appearing real. Instead of faith. Forsaking all, I take him. Just ask Grisha Siklenko. In 1960, an amazing event occurred in a tiny village in the Ukraine. Grisha appeared one day, much to the shock of his friends and his neighbors. Why? Because everyone thought that Grisha Siklenko had died in World War II. Actually, though, the night that he marched away to war, he turned around and went home. He went home to where his mother had made a hiding place for him, a hiding place deep down underneath a manure pile. And so for 18 years, Grisha Siklenko lived down there in that hiding place, under all that manure. In the winter, he nearly froze to death. In the summer, he nearly suffocated to death. Finally, in 1960, Grisha walked out of the manure, expecting to be prosecuted, punished, and placed in prison. But his, his fears were groundless. The statue of limitations had long since expired. And yet, fear does that to us, doesn't it? And we end up living in manure because of it. And then guess what happens? Life stinks. Life really stinks. But there's another way. The way of faith. For in faith we hear the angels promise at the tomb. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Just as he said. We can trust what Jesus says. Jesus says, I took away your sin. I conquered death. I'm alive bodily and eternally. And I'm coming again to perfect your body and to restore the entire creation. Fear be gone. Here is faith. I know I've shared before with you what the most frequent command in the Bible turns out to be. Do you remember what instruction, what order is given repeatedly by prophets, by angels, by Jesus, and by apostles? What do you think it is? Is it be good? Is it be holy? Is it don't sleep during the sermon? No, it's not that either. The most frequent command in the Bible is simply this. Don't fear. 365 times we read it in Scripture, one for each and every day of the year. And why is that? Because living in fear is like living in manure. Everything stinks. But faith, 
Faith is so sweet. Forsaking all, I take him. Him, our Redeemer, Jesus, who creates life from death, joy from sadness, and beauty from ashes. And don't forget the rubies. Christ brings rubies out of our scars. Do you have small children? Don't fear. Do you have teenagers? Don't fear. Has everything gone terribly wrong? Don't fear. Are you sick? Don't fear. Is your heart absolutely broken? Don't fear. For on this Easter and always, let these six words go down into your mind and heart and never let them go. I know that my Redeemer lives. And then... What else is left for us to say but this? Forsaking all, I take him, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. We are so thankful to be gathered together with you today uh, to hear God's word Uh, to receive his gifts, and to celebrate what he has done for us. Uh, All throughout this year at Trinity, this uh, um, school year, we've had our theme as the year of life together. And so on fifth Sundays, we've had church-wide potlucks. Well, it doesn't really work on Easter Sunday, but we did plan a church-wide bake goods fellowship. And so, so many of our members have brought baked goods to share Immediately following the service, they're going to do that in the parish hall. And whether you brought something or not, we hope you can stick around and enjoy the time together uh, with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. As always, too, we encourage you uh, to grow in your faith. And as, as uh, working towards that, we've provided many Bible studies here at church to do just that. We have a new women's Bible study starting a week from tomorrow. Uh, Mondays at 5.30. Our men's Bible study meets every Thursday at 4.30. We have a Wednesday morning Bible study that's going through the book of Hebrews. It meets every Wednesday at 10. And then every Sunday in between services, not today, but every other Sunday, we have adult Bible class in the parish hall and youth Sunday school upstairs. Uh, We encourage and pray that God would lead you to take advantage of those opportunities so that in the midst of a world where we are beset by fear, left and right, that we'd be pointed here in this place again and again through God's word to the faith that we have in Christ, to know that since he has risen from the dead, we, we shouldn't fear, but we can trust in him And we can follow where he leads. We pray that that may be the case for you and your family through God's grace. So having heard God's word proclaimed today, I invite the congregation to stand and let us confess our faith together. And as we do on fifth Sundays, we do that through singing our hymn, the hymn that um, leads us to confess our faith as we sing together this creedal hymn.
Onward in Christ's footsteps treading, pilgrims here, our home above, full of faith and hope and love, let us do the Father's bidding. And so we pray, living Lord Jesus, on the first day of the week, you rolled away the stone from the tomb, and you opened up life for all who believe. Roll away the stones of fear in our lives, Lord, in your mercy. Living Lord Jesus, replace our fear with bold faith, a faith that looks at challenges, pain, setbacks, and heartaches, and gives it all to you, Lord, in your mercy. Living Lord Jesus, release us from the prisons of fear that we might be free, set free all who live in bondage to anxiety, chained to addiction, and enslaved to evil, Lord, in your mercy. Living Lord Jesus, you set your table before us, the remembrance of the Passover fulfilled and the anticipation of the future prepared for us. Give us faith that we may receive this Holy Communion for our benefit and show forth love for you and for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Living Lord Jesus, you address the sick and the suffering with your grace to heal, relieve, and restore. Give to all the sick, the wounded, the grieving, and the dying the full measure of your healing grace to support them in their need. Lord, in your mercy. Living Lord Jesus, you bid us to go forth confidently with Easter faith and a deathless and endless hallelujah. We will do just that in the power of your Holy Spirit and as a witness to the world. Jesus, let me faithful be, life eternal grant to me. Amen. We prepare to receive God's gifts for us today through the body and blood of Jesus our Savior. So as we prepare to do that, we, we ask ourselves, am I a sinner? Am I sorry for my sin? Do I need forgiveness? And if so, do I trust in Jesus, believe in him as my Savior from sin? And do I believe and trust in his words? that in this meal I truly do receive the body and blood of Jesus my Savior for the forgiveness of my sins and the strengthening of my faith. And then we ask ourselves, do we intend with the help of the Holy Spirit to change my sinful life and to serve you, Lord? And if the Lord leads us as a baptized Christian to make that confession, and if that's our confession, then we come and we joyfully receive God's gifts. If that's not your confession today, you're still invited to come forward, and if you cross yourself, that means that we'll give you a blessing, reminding you of God's love for you in Christ. We look forward to celebrating God's gifts to us this day in this holy meal, and so we begin the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you did not spare your only Son, but gave him into death, that we might have life. Though we cannot understand your love or comprehend eternity, we lift our voices in thanksgiving and pray you to strengthen us through this sacrament to serve as your witnesses. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear anew the words of our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
True body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the mercy and the strength of the Lord, and the one true faithful found unto life everlasting. Pardon our Lord's deeds, forgive us, and free us from
life everlasting. Heart and the Lord's peace are given and free. gifts to us in communion on this Easter morning, I invite the congregation to stand as we joyfully sing together, Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord and sing His praise. Tell everyone what He has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear His name. He recalls His promises and leads his people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving alleluia <coughs> let us pray we give thanks heavenly father through jesus christ our lord that you have refreshed us through this gift of life forgiveness and salvation strengthen us by this sacrament to announce this gracious good news so that many may join us at the Lamb's high feast through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We are saved by Christ. Go then in his peace and with his blessing upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We close our Easter service this morning as we sing together hymn 465. Now all the vaults of heaven resound.